protesters who are calling for an overhaul of the country's electoral system. Security forces fired tear gas and water cannon at demonstrators in the capital, Kuala Lumpur. Harry Fawcett is live for us in the capital. Harry, I believe you've just witnessed some uh, police violence. What happened? Yeah, we experienced some police violence. I'm coming to you via Skype from uh, an iPad because the Malaysian police have just uh, busted our camera. Um, basically, about two and a half hours after the main clash at Modek Square, Independent Square, where the protesters had been trying to get through police barricades, they did so, and they were forced back with water cannon and tear gas. Um, the police had pretty much stood down from that point. And then uh, two and a half hours later, a small group of Bersi protesters who were protesting for electoral reform, they, uh, they, they charged back towards the square and uh, black shirted police uh, ran into them. And uh, a number of instances we saw policemen, uh, a group of them grabbing protesters, holding them, while another one would uh, punch or knee or slap the protester. We went in to try and film that ourselves and found ourselves subject to not quite such harsh treatment, but not uh, dissimilar. We were, we were shoved and held and our camera pushed to the ground. It seemed they were under instructions, perhaps, to prevent the media from filming that kind of thing. Uh, we, we don't know exactly uh, how many times this happened, but uh, certainly after the initial clash, which the protesters seem to be to blame for, really, because they... Uh, contrary to the plans to, to sit behind the barricades and not try and get through to Independence Square, they did so. Uh, but then in these uh, uh, subsequent scuffles, the police were extremely heavy-handed, just with protesters, but also to a limited extent with us. What is it that the protesters want? You mentioned electoral reform. Are their demands considered fair? Well, the, the, the government says that a lot of their demands are already being addressed. There was a similar protest last year, Bercy 2.0. This was Bercy 3.0. Um, last year, they tried to, to, to go to Medeca uh, Stadium, the independent stadium, uh, and were pre prevented from doing so in similar fashion. Uh, but since then, the Prime Minister Najib Razak made a, a high-profile speech in September outlining a number of liberalizing reforms. He uh, set up a parliamentary select committee which would look at the whole issue of electoral reform. Reform, and that reported a couple of weeks ago, uh, the lower house of parliament approved it. Uh, the protesters, though, say that the, the reforms that have been put in place or are likely to be put in place won't be ready in time for elections. We're widely expected to take place in June. And they also say that the Electoral Commission, which has been charged with carrying out these reforms, that it is a politically biased organization and they want to see it disbanded and, and reformed along more independent lines. So that's what the essence of this protest was about. Uh, what it turned into was something pretty ugly. And Harry Fawcett, thank you for updating us on that latest police action from Kuala Lumpur. And the organisers of the rally are known as the Bursia term, meaning clean in Malay. They say the country's electoral roll is full of inaccuracies, including dead people and duplicate names. They want the entire system to be overhauled to make sure Malaysians can cast their ballots abroad. They believe the election commission is biased in favour of the government and want its members to resign. But Malaysia's Prime Minister Najib Razak insists the right laws are in place to stop irregularities or fraud. Kamal Pan Chanatan is a member of the ruling coalition party. He joins us now live from Kuala Lumpur. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm not sure you heard what our correspondent had to say, but he's been in the midst of some very heavy-handed police violence. Why is that necessary? Yeah, okay. I heard what your correspondent uh, reported from uh, Kuala Lumpur, but I also heard him say that uh, the protesters uh, broke the barricade. I think police were very careful in handling them. Police didn't want to take any uh, higher-handed uh, action. But he clearly said that, and I heard that very clearly, that the protesters broke the barricades made by okay, the police. Okay, he did confirm that and they I broke the barricade, uh, the but the barricade, but is this sort of action justified? Uh, you've, you've had uh, police kneeing protesters in the face, tear gas, water cannon. Okay, in the first place, in the first place, this entire rally was not justified. Uh, two reasons. One, uh, the electoral reform is being done. The electoral reform is being done right now, and it has been submitted. The parliament has already agreed to it. Number two, the police were willing to cooperate with the Bursa organizers in providing them an alternative site. 
Uh, under the peaceful assembly, uh, they need to get uh, approval if they want to conduct an assembly. And if the assembly is being conducted in a designated site, they do not need any uh, any approval from any authorities of the in the country. But police were willing. The, the Ministry of Home Affairs were willing to give. Uh, a proper avenue, uh, a venue for the protesters to gather and they were also willing to protect them from any kind of attempts to break them down. But unfortunately, uh, they did not uh, want to hear. The issue here is very simple. Uh, are they interested in the cause, which is the, what, what they want, they call the free and fair elections, or were they interested in the venue? I, I, after all these things, I realized that they were not interested in the cause, but they were more interested in the venue. If the venue was an issue, then the entire electoral Rome process, the elect electoral reform process, is actually they, a big political moving for us. They certainly are disagreeing with you. You say but this is not justified. That, yeah. excuse, excuse me, interrupting. Uh, you, you know, you've got thousands of people sure. on the streets. They say that electoral reform hasn't gone far enough. They say that the country's electoral role is full of inaccuracies, including dead people and duplicate names. I mean, those are, are fair criticisms, aren't they? I, I, I agree. We, are, we understand there's about 42,000 names in the electoral road that needs to be cleared. And the EC are willing to clear those names when if the rules permit them. Right now, the Electoral Reform Committee have recommended to the government that we look into the rules to give EC more power to take away names in the electoral road. One, having said that, you have just said thousands of people are protesting on the street, but it's also the responsibility of the police to protect the millions of people who are sitting at home and don't want. What happens? What happens? The thousands of people there on the street, they're not happy with the electoral reform. What happens? The millions of people decide who's happy with the electoral reform go to the same place to show their protest. So the police don't want such thing to take place. So they are trying to, to tell the people they don't need to do this. And the government was willing to cooperate with the organizers. They were even willing to identify a stadium and give them all the protection that they needed. And another thing, this entire Bursia rally, we realized after seeing the footages uh, by various TV stations, it became a political, a politics uh, agenda. If you look at the way the oppositions were chatted around, they were chairing, carrying them as champion. Now, who is the anti-organizers? Was it Bersay or political parties? Okay. Bersay claimed it's an NGO effort, but I didn't see such thing happening. So, Bersay has been used by a political party to use this entire agenda to fulfill their wishes, not Bersay's wishes anymore. It has become okay, a Mr. political agenda. Okay, Mr. Chanan, thank you very much for talking to us and giving your side of the story. Thank you very much. Thank a U.S.-based rights group says Chinese activist Chen Guanchen